How about you decide what you want for your breakfast? Hmm? Well, seem a bit kiddie wink to me, but he will insist. Bandersnatch was Netflix's first step into interactive, choose your own adventure style content. Netflix saw an opportunity to do something with their platform that would have previously been difficult or impossible to do with film or TV. Part of the Black Mirror series, Bandersnatch is pretty brilliant, but it's why Bandersnatch is brilliant that I think actually perfectly illustrates why interactive content might be a dead end. Thank you to Mubi.com for sponsoring this video. Choose your own adventure stories are nothing new. They've existed in books for a long time, and video games have explored interactive narratives extensively and fairly successfully. There have been attempts to create the format for film, but until now, the technology has always limited how well that worked. The biggest obstacle when it comes to film and books is the bandwidth issue. When you give the audience choices to make, you obviously can't give them every possible choice. You have to limit their choices. Otherwise, your book would be too huge or your movie would be too long to even film. What's happened? Well, I haven't programmed that pathway yet. Here, video games have the distinct advantage where writing and rendering multiple storylines is much more practical. But even with these economic benefits, video games can sometimes still struggle to provide characters with enough freedom of choice that the player actually feels in control and like their decisions matter within the story. So when you limit choice even further than you would in a video game for a choose your own adventure film. Would you like to talk about what happened with your mother? It can be helpful to revisit things, even if you've feel you've done this before. The viewer or player will quickly start to feel very limited. You really might learn something new. So I'll ask again. Would you like to talk about what happened with your mother? And what choices are left out can hold just as much meaning as which of the available choices the viewer takes. For example, Bandersnatch is strictly binary decision tree. As the viewer, this is only an illusion of choice. You don't truly have any freedom. You cannot really guide the character in any kind of meaningful way. And this becomes quickly obvious. The effect is that it's very difficult to feel immersed in the character's story. But what Bandersnatch gets right, where it's smart, is that it knows this. Sorry, mate. Long path. The irony is that the first piece of interactive content on Netflix is already using the meta limitations of the format to tell its stories. The story explores themes of control, limited choice, fate, Are you coming or not? free will, and how reliving the same events would change things. It's a buffer error. The uh, eyeballs have overrun the video memory. Oh, what's that? Buffer error. As eyeball sprites overshot the video memory. These are all themes that have relevance to the format. All of this is happening to entertain someone. Someone who's controlling you. Uh -huh. Where these elements could be downsides, Bandersnatch uses them to its advantage. Wouldn't you want a little more action if you were watching this now on telly? When you feel limited by the available choices of viewer, when you feel as if you're being guided or forced towards a certain conclusion, that only reinforces what the character is feeling in the story. Almost every ending in Bandersnatch explores these kinds of themes in some way. And even when it doesn't, going back through the film and finding different paths and endings is an intended part of the experience. If you do it long enough, the details start to feel jumbled. You start to lose touch with what happened in this watch through and what didn't. You no longer know what's real in the story, which is exactly the feeling that's driving the protagonist insane. It's what, in my opinion, keeps Bandersnatch from being merely a technical curiosity. And it's the perfect move for a Black Mirror story. But this is also why Bandersnatch reveals that the interactive format might be a dead end. Because the subversion of the format is the strongest element of Bandersnatch. 
without the meta-relevance between the themes of the film and the limitations of the format. It just kind of becomes a mediocre story. The focus becomes trying to figure out the right combination of decisions to find different endings. Don't get me wrong, that can definitely be fun, but I think the kinds of stories that this format can be used to tell well is very limited. Movies already tell stories well. We don't need to be able to control the character to tell stories better. The choose your own adventure format adds an incredible amount of work and writing to the process. I haven't programmed that path yet. Right. It's a lot of paths then. Yes, if, if it's going to be like the book. So storytellers must consider, is the story actually better told by the use of this format? Because it requires so much additional work, there's little reason to use the format unless you strongly believe that's the case. Unless, of course, you're just relying on a gimmick to sell your story. The limited choice of interactive content only serves to remind the viewer that they're watching something manufactured and limited. It's out of your control. Your fate has been dictated. The different endings can make it difficult to talk about with your friends and for critics to review. Most of the conversation, like this video, ends up being about the meta aspects of the format and not about the story itself, because which version is the story? Bandersnatch cleverly overcomes these limitations and uses them to its advantage, but I doubt many stories will be able to. I can imagine other stories fitting into this format. Another Netflix original Russian doll deals with a Groundhog Day style repeating storyline. A story like that could be very compelling within the format because the context for going back and starting over would be built into the story. But Netflix's second step into interactive content further supports my suspicions. The Bear Grylls' You vs. Wild is an interactive take on his series Man vs. Wild, but the result is, well... Take our chances with this line, or rappel down in and carry on that way. Remember, the clock is ticking. We've barely started our journey, and in this jungle heat, the medicine will spoil in less than 24 hours. So hurry and decide which way... So you want to rappel down the side of this into the gorge? it kind of becomes an overly simplistic game. The interactive format doesn't really add anything to the experience of the show. No doubt people will talk about these future interactive films and watch them for novelty's sake. But for now, I have a hard time believing it will be a success beyond novelty. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think interactive content has a big future as a genre? Or do you think it will mostly fall into obscurity as a novelty? Thanks again to Mubi for sponsoring this video. Right now on Mubi, you can watch Errol Morris's Thin Blue Line along with two other of his early documentaries. The Thin Blue Line is one of the foundational true crime documentaries that paved the way for documentaries like The Jinx and Making a Murderer. You can watch it along with the 30 other films that are currently in Mubi's library when you go to Mubi.com slash Thomas Flight and sign up for a 30 day free trial. Every day Mubi adds one new movie and takes one away. There's a rotating library of 30 films. I like so much of what I find and watch on Mubi, I think their curation is really strong. And again, you can try it for free when you go to Mubi.com slash Thomas Flight and sign up for a 30 day free trial. Go to Mubi.com slash Thomas Flight for your extended 30 day free trial. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you especially to my Patreon supporters. Depending on the level they give at, my patrons get access to a monthly bonus video, a monthly podcast, a Discord server, and more. You can check it out and decide if you want to help support my channel at patreon.com slash thomaslight.